There are three main levels of access available in our structure. These comprise of a master user sitting with inside a master account, a sub-master user sitting inside a sub-master account, and sub-users that can sit in any of those accounts. Paperwork is required by way of a form to be filled out in the master user and the sub-master user to create the master account and sub-master account structures as well. After these accounts have been created, the sub-masters and master users have the ability to create sub-users without the need for paperwork. Various different access rights and policy rights can be assigned to each of the users. A master user can also go on to the, the site and allow different levels of access to the sub-master and then that can be then passed down to the sub-user. So let's now take a look at the control panel where we see the structure fitting in. Okay, so here we are logged into the online services site as a master user. In this case, we are logged in as demo master user too. We're going to take a look at our hierarchy structure now, our access levels. And we'll do that through the control panel, found on every page at the top. In our control panel view here, we have a very simple structure. We have our master account at the top containing two master users and a sub-user, a sub-account containing one sub-master user and one sub-user, and another sub-account containing this time two sub-master users and two sub-users. We're logged in as this user here, demo master user 2, and here we can see the username of each individual. This username is currently blurred out for security reasons, but in each case, this username always follows from the actual name of the person. Logged into this account, I can see what access privileges I have. In this case, I have access to services, illustrations, and switching, but I can't actually edit myself. Neither can I edit the person that's at the same level as me. So if you're the master user, is completely locked out to me. Being a master user, I can edit anybody in the following structure below me. If I was to be logged in as a sub-master user, though, I would only have access to the people below me in my sub-account. The master users and the sub-master users, as mentioned earlier, have to be set up manually by filling out account creation and user registration form found at the top. Sub-users however can be created without the need for paperwork by clicking create sub-user. And we'll go on to that in the following lesson. Although only sub-users can be created online, any of the users below you in the structure can be edited. Here we have a sub-master, demo sub-master 2, who has a password lock due to entering a password incorrectly too many times. This password can be unlocked, in this case by a master user, by clicking the edit button here. The edit button brings up four options, edit user data, edit user permissions, suspended user, and deleted user. In this case, we're going to edit user data where we can unlock the password. Once on the edit user data and change accounts page, we can access any of the information we have on that individual. Basic information can be changed and saved, as can the place and the location where that user is assigned into the account. Here we see that this user is currently assigned to demo sub account 2, which we can also see from the item on the right hand side. Each individual is required to have security questions so that they can be identified when calling. Finally, on this page at the bottom right, we have a dynamic set of buttons that will be generated 
based on the criteria of that individual user. Here we can see this user has a password lock and we can unlock this account by simply clicking on the button. If we return to the control panel now, and we can see that this user no longer has a password lock. Along with editing user data, we can also edit the access rights of an individual. To do this, we click on the edit and go to edit user permissions. From this page, we can give this particular user access to the different parts of the site. In the edit permissions area, we see this user has access to policy servicing, which can be removed or kept on by ticking the box. Access to illustrations in the same manner can be added or removed. Online dealing is a bit different. It's worth noting that access to online dealing will allow users to perform a switch on our tool products such as Quantum and Paracon, whereas online dealing access across our portfolio bonds, PIMS, Select and Choice will be launching in 2013. Access to online dealing requires an online dealing access form to be completed and return to Royal London 360. Royal London 360 will then activate the online dealing for that particular user, at which point you can then remove access at any point in the future by de-checking this box. Under the user status area, we have the ability to suspend this user and also delete this user. Deleting the user will instantly deny access to that particular individual. Finally on this page, we have the policy assignment. Our policy list can be filtered by client name, policy number, product and policy status. These policies have been blurred for security reasons, but are simply the policy number and the client name. Policies can be double clicked to add it to this particular user's access list or can be selected and the add button will do the same thing. Multiple policies in a row can be selected holding the shift key down or individual policies can be clicked holding the control key to select multiple ones. This user now has access to these five policies once we've saved at the top. We can now return to the control panel view. The Swordmaster user we just edited now has access to those five policies. And most importantly, the Sword account has access to those five policies. If we now want to amend the policy access rights for this sub user, we do it in exactly the same way. Select user permission. Here you'll see all the same details as before, but the slight difference that only five policies are available to pass on to the sub-user. The reason for that is that the sub-master account and the sub-masters that are in this group only have access to five policies, so we can only pass these five policies on to this particular sub-user. Selecting two policies from the list, again clicking save. And if we now return to the control panel view, this master, the sub account, has access to five policies, as does this sub master. But the sub user only has access to two policies that we've passed on down the chain. That's the end of the tutorial. 
I hope you found it useful. If you have any queries, you can contact our online support team at websupport at rl360.com. Thank you for watching.